Kingsway Soft is a leading integration solution provider, offering software solutions that make data integration affordable and painlessly easy. Thousands of enterprise clients from over 80 countries and regions rely on Kingsway Soft to integrate data with various business systems in order to drive their business efficiency and fully leverage their information assets. Kingsway Soft now completely supports the web API. KWS is a leading provider of Microsoft Dynamics integration software, including Dynamics 365, CE, F&O, BC, GP, SL, as well as many other business applications. You're listening to the Power Platform People podcast on the CRM Audio Network with the bearded CRM guy Ian Connolly and the Mark Christie. Welcome to episode two of the Power Platform People podcast. Thanks for everyone who's coming back to listen to us again, and hello anyone who's not. Hello, yeah, and thank you. It's dulcet tones, really, isn't it? That's what people are coming back for. <laughs> yeah, but, definitely for our band. 100%. <laughs> I think today today's going to be a little bit... So, a more a somber podcast, and we're not, we're not going to talk technology, but we're kind of going to talk something that is really close to both of us, I think. Yeah, I think it kind of stems off of the the blog post on mental health and just talking about reaching out to people and having a conversation about it. So today, today's podcast, we have Brett Rogers on and he's going to talk about how he's currently feeling and exactly why you should reach out to people. For us, the one thing we need to kind of stress here as well is for all that we have our own ideas and theories on, on mental health, we definitely aren't professionals and if you need to reach out to someone in Scotland you've got the SAMH the Scottish Association for Mental Health thank you Scottish Association for Mental Health or a, a foundation there that can help you and obviously reach out to your local foundation charity GP doctor whatever you need yeah I mean we can't stress that enough if if you do need to talk to somebody whether it's a charity whether it's a friend family um, do reach out. We Ian's mentioned we're not professionals at this. We're just telling you our experiences, what has worked for us, what maybe hasn't worked for us. Um, everybody's different. Everyone's mind works differently. It's not. It's not anything that there's a right or a wrong way of approaching things. We can only tell you what's worked and not worked for us. So overall, that's... it's just a chat we're having with Brett, aka Moses. So let's go on into that just now and see how that goes. Boom. So, fingers crossed this time we have Brett joining us. Hey, Brett. Hello, Brett. Hey, guys. Mark, Ian. How's it going? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. How are you? Yeah, no, all good. Uh, Just obviously, hence uh, reaching out to you and here we are today. And uh, thank you for having me on your podcast. It's actually weird to be on the other side of the table for a change. Yeah, we're going to give you a proper grilling. You're going to get a proper, proper grilling from us here. (laughs) <laughs> uh, looking forward to it lads. we're going to ask all the mental questions that you ask us when we came on your podcast oh, we're yeah? just going to fling that all back at you no actually oh, let, let's no. be serious about it as we said in the in the start of this we we want to talk a bit more about mental health and how it affects everybody and everybody has their own story their ups and downs and the positive outcomes that we can get from it yeah it's definitely it's definitely something that's um it's there it's real it's in everyday life i mean I've mentioned it quite a few times myself where you paint on a smile to get through a day. Different people have different coping, coping mechanisms. Different people have reached their level of what they can cope with. And different people get there in different different ways. So let's have a wee chat with Brett and see see what his story is, how he got there, what he's doing. Okay, yeah, so... <laughs> So yeah, so I think the thing is, and I think just to all the listeners out there is, um, I listened, I I read Mark's uh, blog on mental health, and I've never really had any mental health issues. Um, Not to say that I do now, but obviously, I'm just going to say the state that it actually occurs in. So what's currently just happened is I've actually gone through a separation um, with my partner, and there's a little one involved. And to be honest with you, like, you go into such a dark space. Um, now, the reason being why I say that is just like the world, your thoughts, everything else just becomes so dark and you actually, 
you, you, you're not mentally aware um, of what's actually around you, what's happening, the support structures. And at the end of the day, like I thought this, this doesn't happen to me. And it actually did. And I just sat back and I was just like, sorry, I'm getting a little bit upset here. Well, teary eyed is that I ne- like it actually happened to me and I can actually believe what people go on about and say like, to be mentally fit, you have to be happy. And I was chasing happiness for so long that I forgot about the small things. I forgot about spending some time with some people. I forgot to spend time with my partner. I forgot to spend time with my little one. And um, at the end of the day, those small things started adding up because I put work first. I, I did a lot of I did a lot of things. I, I challenged myself. I put myself out there. But you you end up you end up alone you end up like you say mark you're in a hotel room working late at night you yeah. you're grabbing a couple of like fast foods and you're actually doing more damage than good and um i don't i don't i, I don't know how you guys feel about it but it's just like i look back and i'm just like i'm i'm i'm, I'm sad of what's happened due yeah, to I my actions so. but yeah so i think and it's also there's, t- there's, there's, there's multiple things. Um, so I got put on medication. Um, it, it was really rough medication. It really, it really, how can I say, it altered me. Um, my friends started noticing it. Um, they turned around and said to me, listen, Brett or Moses, this isn't you, you know, this is, this is not the person we know. We, we don't know this guy. We don't know this quiet individual. We want the happy guy, the guy that asks the 10 questions that are quite random, as you, as you lads would know. And, um, yo, I, I lost myself. I lost my core. And um, it, it's not nice. It's not, I don't wish it upon my worst enemy whatsoever. I agree. It's for, I think for me, it was the, the awkward state of what is normal. You, you, as yeah. you say, you go to the hotels, you grab your fast food, that becomes your, your normal life and you, you forget about the small things. It's something that I think most people that would listen to this or have had some sort of f- touch and base with it, even just real slightly into that dark side of it, you, you do change what is normal. And when your friends start noticing it, maybe that's sometimes the kind of kick that you need that brings you back one way. And I don't mean kicking that, it's just, it's just that twist in perception. Yeah, yeah there, there is definitely something there. I mean, with your point there about the medication, I mean, I've I've been on medication for quite a bit to try and uh, deal with my depression. And one of the things that it does do, so, I mean, I, I mean, Ian's, Ian knows all about this because I'll have a, a huge idea and then I, I'll go away and do it. It's like, it's like almost like manic episodes. So I'll have a manic episode where I, I'm going to do this. This is going to be mental. Things like starting a podcast. Yeah, let's do that. That's a great idea. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that I'll do. Yeah, it is, honestly. We have I a do, chat about we, it. I, I, we both drive to work. We have pretty much daily chats, by the way, like no word of a lie. And I'll say something to him in the car. And by the time I get to the car parking into the office, he's emailed me, oh, yeah, I've done that. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, you're right, okay. So I, I kind of end up being this little voice of reason. But it works for us. It keeps us both in the, the straight, bouncing off each other in that way of having been yeah. in, in the place like where we end up. So you go with, I mean, I say you go with the manic, the manic episodes and the really low ones. So sometimes the medication, I mean, what the medication really does, it tries to plateau you. So it tries to take out the highs, it tries to take out the lows and just gets you to an even keel. I mean, that's what it's meant to do for some people it will work. And if I'm honest, I think for me, it has, it has worked quite a bit. Uh, A few folk after the last event that we ran oh you must be really hyper you must be on such a great kick and I'm like well it was a great event I enjoyed myself but I didn't have any highs I didn't have any lows um because of the medication hmm. so it just numbs it out and I think I, I think uh, just uh, hearing you out there there or Mark it's just I don't want to be a person on medication so I've come off of it and it's just like I've noticed a big difference and maybe I've never been a believer of medication where some people are. And um, yeah, I think it's obviously a difference of opinion from that side. And uh, yeah, kudos to you to, how can I say, understand it and be where you are, you know? I don't know if that's a difference of opinion because the medication worked for you to some extent, but also it had that 
negative impact it put you somewhere that made you quieter, it made you more inward than what yeah. you normally are, and then your friends helped pull you out of that. But medication would have done something for some point, and then you got to the point that you realised, actually, I don't need to be on these meds, I need to be me again at this point in time. And right. I think there is, in my experience, there is definitely that point. Some For some people it's a week, some people it's a case of being told they, they need meds. Sometimes it's, it's longer, sometimes they need them on for a long, long time. And as Mark says, it's about balancing that and getting that that finite balance. And sometimes it might just numb it too much. But I think everybody has to have their own experience. And there's another thing that I think you're now doing potentially, Brett, that's not the meds, but you're getting your natural hit because you're doing the training that you're doing. But yeah, that's so, something else we may come on to. <laughs> yeah, so definitely. So so just to just to inform everybody out there, is I, I've, I, I was a very physical person doing motocross back in the day when I was a kid and my dad kept me busy out on the tracks and that and I noticed like being in this dark place and I won't lie I'm still I'm drifting in and out of it every now and again that's why I've been so quiet on the community peeps uh, that's why you haven't heard from me so I'm just trying to deal with my own problems and get number one sorted but yeah all that I do now is I leave work get home jump on a bicycle and I just ride up until the sun sets. And then when darkness sets in, not physically, but actually outside, uh, outside like the, the, the sun and the moon type of effect <laughs> that I come home and that that's my daily routine. And then when I wake up, I go for a, I go for a run. I have, I have to be my like, that's the only way that my mind is calmed down and that's what I'm doing. So it's not to say it's the best routine, um, but it's working for me, guys. And uh, yeah, I've shredded so much weight. That uh, quite is the I, best routine for you. Yeah, and it's working. It's uh, it's definitely working, lads. And uh, eating two pizzas a night uh, just to keep up with the calorie count uh, <laughs> is not helping my food bills either. So, yeah. So just circling back a little bit, obviously you said your separation is what's kind of got you into that place. And... It's a difficult thing because you said you were out in hotels, you were working, you were busy, you were trying to progress yourself. But I mean, one of the reasons that everyone really wants to progress themselves is so that they can do the things that are better with their family. So I want a better job so that I earn more money so that I can spend more time with my family, go on holiday with the family. That's a lot of the reasons why people progress themselves is for the family. And sometimes it does you do miss out the main reason that you're doing it. Yeah. Um, so I think I think the thing is like if we break it down into two concepts there, Mark, is that we've got we've got things that we need money for, so that would be like clothing and housing and food. And then we've obviously got the other concept which is your your being, your your actual person, which is happiness, um, how can I say, uh, purpose, uh and and love, I think, from that side. And getting back to the separation point of view is that I loved entirely up until like I realized that you you can't miss something or you can't love something that you you're not going to have you know and uh, that that's what that's what saddens me and um yeah I'm still trying to figure it out today um I shouldn't be actually figuring it out but uh it, it it's it's taking those two separators of yes I want a better job yes I want to earn more money Yes, I want to provide. I want to be the person. I want to go on those amazing holidays. But how do you find that balance? How do you, how do you guys find that balance? I'm still struggling myself. I I don't think there is a balance. I everything you have to learn because every relationship's yeah. different. Every person's different. Even every job is different. There's so many different factors because you could go from one job to another that just has totally different ethos behind it that means that you have to do things differently which means things at home change it's there's not one right way or wrong way of doing it for anyone it's finding what works for you and your family but i think making sure that that is that is the part of it that you put first yeah, yeah i think for me on that it was the the statement that i kind of heard i'm sure everybody's heard it as well the i don't want to live to work i want to work to live yeah i think i think from my side i love what i do so i love the craft i love the people that i've got around me it's such awesome energy but i just i just couldn't get my work-life balance right you know i still don't uh, my partner she 
still checks me at night if I turn the laptop on or even if I open Outlook on yeah. my phone. She's like, what are you doing? You're not allowed to do that at this time of night. This is our time. And it's just because I, I constantly think about work and not in an unhealthy way. It's just, it is who I am. It's who we are. And it's because of it's such an open community and such a good place to reach out. That we're always looking for new things to learn. Yeah, I'm look- exactly. I'm looking to learn. I'm doing something like that. But for me, it's finding that balance. And I, and I still don't have it right. Again, definitely still don't have it right, but I'm getting better at it. I understand now myself when I'm doing too much that I know that I need to pull back. Whereas before, I'd have been the guy sitting in the hotel room till 10 o'clock at night. I'd have been the guy sitting in my in my office at home till 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night and not realising that everything's pitch black and the only light is from my laptop screen. I mean, that's that's not healthy. Mm. No, you're 100% correct there, yeah. Yeah. Um, so from my side, so like obviously just picking up the beat a little bit, yeah, because I get heavy emotional. Uh, Mark, you can write that down on your whiteboard again. Um, so it's, yeah, number eight number done. Uh, we have got a scorecard, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, in the background there. So I think the thing is, is this like how do we? So if we if we turn it around, right? And I, I'm just going to use myself as a case. So I'm obviously going to mm-hmm. lead back to you guys. Is as you can hear, I'm still positive. I've still got a little bit of a a click a little bit of a smile it's just i think the thing is how do we tell the rest that it's actually real like i'm i'm saying from me personally it's real so if i look at i don't know if you guys uh, listen to like some joko podcast and that type of thing let's use joko uh, joko as a a podcast so he turns around and he says like what happened to you um hey boss you know I've, I've, i've got i had a bad day uh things aren't working for me so joko turns around and says good and i'm like why did he say good and he carries on within his podcast and it's like every problem that you have start using the word good yeah because the minute you can use the word good you're going to learn from that experience it's like mark your pc didn't open up properly now good you learned now to buy a proper laptop now you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, there's, a, there's a whole thing in the scottish dialect where we yeah. always say no problem like i'll say no problem is a term of acknowledgement yep no problem okay i try and not use that because why would it be a problem it's positive no reinforcement problem. yes yeah but it's it's, it's, a, it's a negative like <laughs> saying no problem i should just be like yeah good good's a much better word for it so i should be like good that should be the acknowledgement i'm given totally agree with that no, true and i think the thing is like for me um coming out and reaching out to you guys and just like thanks for thanks for having me here and it's just like i'm 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 starting to get this weight lifted off of my shoulders i'm getting my smile back i'm getting my my fun moses side back and it's because of people like the both of you and uh i'm very appreciative of it you know Uh, on that like let's let's be honest neither me nor mark are professionals in this matter we're just offering an ear to people because we know what it's like and I think that is one of the things that's been good for me is to be able to talk about it. I'm sure for Mark it is, and obviously you've came here to talk about it as well. Yeah, I just want everybody to know. It yeah. is okay to not be okay because we t- sometimes it's just having that voice of somebody who understands or, or can be empathetic. We can't give you answers, but we can be empathetic and help like build a support structure around it. Hmm. No, true. One of the biggest things I think as well is is being able to see it because let's be honest, if you go back maybe a couple of years ago, I think it is still a stigma and a mentality, really. If you're a male, you should be strong and you shouldn't suffer from mental illness. That's a stigma. That's out there, whether we like it or not. Oh, yeah, put a smile on your face, cheer up, you miserable git, things like that. That's the sort of thing, the stigma you get. <laughs> but, miserable git, yeah. Yeah, no, honestly, that is... but let's, let's not deny, let's not deny, though, it takes a strong person to put that face yeah. on it. Oh, yeah. But it takes a strong, it takes a stronger person to stand up and do what Brett's doing right now, what you have done on this and, and speak about it. Yeah, I'm coming out. I mean, that's, that's, that's why I'm here. It's, it's, I'm just telling people it's real. It's, it's done. It's like, and to show that it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm living proof just to say that I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still, yeah, I'm still smiling, still shining. What's that song? No, when you can. Oh, I'm still standing. I have that in my head now. Like I'm still, still standing. standing. Okay, so that's Alton awesome, John. <laughs> but anyway, so like, not not to steal the thunder here, but I mean, if I look at it, I was I was the breadwinner in the family, and um, so let's use it in the terms of gardening. So you got you got a gardener, and then you've got the flower, right? 
so I've been the gardener for so long. Like I'm, I'm digging out the garden. I'm de-weeding everything. I'm cutting the grass. That every time I look at the flower, and that's 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 obviously my partner. And yeah, sorry, man. Um, I look at I look at I look at the flower, and I'm just like, oh, it's so beautiful. You know, I'm I'm glad I'm I'm attend, I'm tending to it. And all these years, it's just I actually just for one for one bad year that I've had last year i just wanted to be the flower for one year and I, that's that's where it all broke and that's where it all fell apart eh? i mean things things can happen all the time i mean i i part of it like you know i like to talk and i'm part of lots of different group chats so yeah we got in one of our chats last night we got a, a message from eliza benitez just oh, yeah. saying hey everyone are you all okay and we're like, yeah we're fine and then she basically shared a tweet from us, from a guy called Scott Hanselman. Um, I retweeted it earlier on, but he's saying, someone I worked with on f- worked with on fun projects, spent personal time with, and appreciated very much has taken their life. And that's just in the past couple of days. And you kind of think, if they had somebody that they could have talked to, things would be different. So it's still out there, and it's still 100% real. That's true. And that's it's such a nice thing just to get a little message, just to say, hey guys, you know, we're thinking about you. Yeah, exactly. And that's just somebody checking in, uh, just to say hello, is everyone all right? Smile on your face, what's happening? And that's, do you know what, sometimes that's all it can be. If somebody just sends you a message or or you're on a, in a work chat or something, they say, how's things going, what you've been up to? Sometimes even just that little thing there is like, well, actually, this is what I've done and this is this is good. And when I'm looking back at it and thinking upon it, yeah, that, that was a good fun thing that I've done recently. I'm, I'm quite happy. I think it's, it's, it's it can, so- it can happen and it's not, it's not something that's going to go away quickly. Um, it's not something that's even easy to resolve. I mean, I know here in the UK, they're trying to introduce mental health awareness in schools. Um, employers are now doing a lot. Um, I'm quite impressed. I mean, obviously, I started a new job this week. My company that I've just gone to are very proactive with mental health. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a big thing is actually being proactive, asking if somebody is, yeah, asking if somebody's okay before there's an issue rather than being, oh, there's an issue. Let's look at it now. It's being proactive. It's saying, let's, uh, let's have a look. How are you feeling this week? You had a good week. You had a bad week. Um, my first, honestly, first week, and they're asking me, right, okay, so I was off on holiday last week. I was playing about with power apps. This is the first time I've actually talked to anything technical. So I was playing about with power apps, created a little mental health power app that was just basic, Excel in the background. How are you feeling today? What's the date? Um, I'll give you in some credit, but I'm not saying what for. Um, <laughs> there's lots of little bits where you could get data, you could alert somebody if you're having a bad day. So somebody in my new office has seen that. I had a chat about how can we implement that into the office. That's that's what I like, a, pro, a progressive company who are trying to be proactive in mental oh. health. And they're also sending people on mental health first aid courses as well, which is fantastic. Oh. And I'm going to try and get myself one on. I think Ian mentioned he was going to try and get himself on one yeah. as well. Yeah, my partner's work, they've they, they've sent to a lot of people there as well. They've sorry, sent them on the whole mental health first aid courses, and I think it's something that's really good for businesses to stand up and say, not just here's an advice line, phone it confidentially, but to have in an open space somewhere yeah. where you can go and chat. So we've got, uh, at our company, yeah, we've actually got people managers, and uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to a wonderful lady by the name of Liesl. She's actually just been such a great support system i've let it down a few times in the past couple of weeks it's just traffic's been crazy and that but exactly she like i think our officers are aware of it we we like high functioning people there's a lot of pressure on us and it's so great to actually just let somebody listen to you and not i wouldn't say give you advice but guide you and just say you know what it's okay yes take some time off let's do this for you let's try that and 100% 100% in saying if the support structure not only from a, a work uh, environment is there, but also at home, it just makes it so much easier for all of us, gents and ladies. Yeah. Well, I think over here you've got, I don't know if it's the same for you, but you have mm-hmm. occupational health. 
where they come into the work and they make sure that your seat is in the right place and they do all that. I think for them, there's a lot of, yeah, that's, they're the people for mental health, but they're not. They're the people to make sure that your occupational area is healthy for you, but not about your mind space. That's yeah. something that's totally different. And I think it's good in the UK to see people doing that now more and, and taking more yeah. ownership of it. So, so, I mean, gents, just from my side, I mean, what, 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 like, I'm just like, it's all new to me. Um, it's only been like a couple of months now. Um, how long has it been for you guys? Because like, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm getting better. Just, I, I don't want it to be prolonged, you know? Right. So, so here is the thing. I will go back. Right. Let's see. Two and a half years, maybe three years. I, I, it's, it's one of these ones how when did you first get it because as you said you didn't know you were slipping into no, that spiral really. i actually think we're for me it's going back about probably four to five years okay because i'm i mean i'm thinking back to to a partner that i worked at and i can remember i mean if you've read my blog you've probably you probably know this story but I was in a room at three o'clock in the morning with a company director, a consultant, and a developer based over in the Ukraine, trying to get a solution working for a demo we were doing at nine o'clock the yeah. next morning. Um, and then I kind of walked away from that and thought, that's absolutely ridiculous. Why, why am I doing this? Why am I stressed? Why have I had an hour's sleep? And then why, at the end of that day, was I getting sent to another customer? So I'd done that demo uh, down in Essex. I was then flown from Essex up to Aberdeen. My car was still in Edinburgh, where I flew down from. I didn't have clothes, but a customer needed me. And that's when I thought, right, I'm not at home all the time. I've nobody to speak to. Um, I think my wife at that point had just come off night shift and was kind of adapting to that. But at the time, part of this was happening, she was working night shift. So there was nobody really for me to talk to at those points. Like when I would get to the hotel, I couldn't FaceTime home like I do now. There was like nobody. So you were in the hotel, you were either working because there was deadlines to meet or you were just, you were sitting about, you were watching TV you were on the laptop, you were buying shit from eBay you didn't need. You were cooking up con concoctions of how to start new companies and take over the world and just silly things like that. And that kind of went on for a little bit. But I think the one that really actually hit me in the first place was I got told to stay down on that, that same project, actually. I got down, had to stay down an extra day. So I had to cancel my dog's vet appointment and move it back a day. So I came back the next day, or came back the next day, and it was the following morning I had to take the dog in for yeah. his appointment. The yeah. dog basically died in my arms that morning on the way to putting him in the car. Oh, sorry, man. And I think that's, that's the one that kind of hits me off that's probably around the time where it happened. I didn't realize it was happening. I just thought I was having a bad day. That bad day turns into, I mean, this is how I, f I find I can see now my pattern. So my bad day turns into a bad couple of days. The bad couple of days turns into a bad week. Then that bad week rolls into a bad couple of weeks. And you don't realize you're doing that unless you're actually taking stock of that yourself. You don't realize that's yeah. actually what's happening. So it rolls on and it rolls on. And I mean, I think I probably had a proper breakdown about two years ago. Totally, total breakdown. Went to the doctor, spoke to the doctor and got some pills for it. So we've done that. But yeah, it's, it's difficult because you don't, you don't know when it started. I went on... Um, cit Citroplam, I think it was called. I'm, I'm probably absolutely butchering that. So anyone in the medical profession, I do apologize profusely for that. But yeah, I got put on that. I was on that for about six or seven months and thought, mm, right, it's okay. And then there's a couple of weeks where I think I'd ran out and I didn't have time to go to the doctors, me being lazy like I normally do, and thought, oh yeah, it's not made a difference. 
Um, I still feel the same as I was feeling. It must have worked. I must feel better now. So that's quite a dangerous thing because it actually takes about a month to eight weeks for medication to get in and out of your system. So I thought, yeah, that six months was good. I've been off it now for a couple of months or a month and a bit and I feel better. Not realizing it was still in my system, still leveling me out or plateauing me out. So that that then kind of led me, yeah, it's fine, but I was just going further and further and further down. And so I'd say probably since I wrote that blog post in November, I've been back on uh, medication. And I think it was the blog post was kind of the bit where I, that was probably the second breaking point. And just being able to talk about it has been really good and raising awareness to it. And this might, this probably is very selfish, but the more I talk about it, the better, and it's not even my situation. The more I just talk about mental health, mental health awareness, it makes me feel better. I know that. Is- Do you think that's because of the ownership of it? Because you start owning how you feel better. No, no not really. Because I don't. Able to reason no, for me, it. I don't control how I feel. I I can't help if my moods go up or my moods go down. That's a ninety-five percent of the time. My moods are not affected by anything that I've done. My moods are usually affected by what somebody else has done or what somebody else is asking you to do. It's not, I mean, that's maybe me totally sh- in the bed with it. But for me, I don't feel a lot of the time it's, it's in my control. Um, I've, I've done, I suppose it's ownership of I've known that it's not in your control. I suppose yeah. that's what I mean there. You know that it's not your control. You know that it's something else. You know is the cause and reaction that allows you to then take that step back to kind of look at it through a third eye almost and understand the scenario better. Or is it because you understand your triggers i don't know if it's the triggers but one one of the things that i did do so first time around when i was on the medication i did go to a therapist and she taught me some cognitive behavior things and what she actually done was she aligned it to being a consultant so That's you've got a decision to make you think of yeah so so think of this right so i'm told right what you do in your work i explained what my job was so i'll go in and I find out what they want to do. I look at it. I make a decision. I play it back. So she said, right. So the next time you you've got a decision to make that has an effect on something, think about it. Write it down. Write down what the possible outcomes could be, and then think about the decision again and make your decision. So it was almost yeah. being a consultant in your own head. Now a lot of people are going to listen to that and think, "Yeah, pal, you're just making a decision." But it, it is different. I don't know how to explain it. I think you've explained more as what I mean by ownership. You're owning that decision by doing that. Yeah, it could, it could well be that. Yeah. that that's what I mean. It's maybe different ways of saying the same sort of thing, but that's how I feel about it. It's like when I can spot what's happening to me and how it's making me feel, I know that I need to own the step back. I know that I need to own the thought process around it and not be reactive to it sometimes yeah it's different. that is like, known I, I don't really want to talk about it in the podcast but the thing i spoke to you about a couple yep. of weeks ago when i was sitting in the car and i could have done something to somebody else yep. that would have been it wouldn't have been a good situation for anybody and I, and I owned that decision to to move away from it because that was the right thing to do and now i'm dealing with the, the fallout from it but yeah. it was the right decision and it's been able to to know that, do you, Brett? Do you know what your triggers are, or can you yeah, see so, like a I low mean, mood from coming? Side, I think the thing is, it's like I can definitely. Um, I I have a very, how can I say, my I, I do things very rash, rational, irrationally. Um, it's just due to the fact, and those are my triggers. Like I do things irrationally. Like I would yeah. say something that I don't mean. It didn't mean to come out that way, and then it starts like it starts a fight. You know, so those are my type of things. I've had to learn how to trigger it. Um, what I try and do now as well is I just listen. I have to start listening a lot more, 100%, like you're saying, being the consultant, writing things down. I have to listen. And then I confide in my family. So like my mom, my dad, and my sister, um, I confide in them, and they, they've been awesome. It's just those trigger events, those trigger moments, and everything else on that side um, causes has a cause and effect. So like you're saying, Ian says he had to step away from it and sit in the car and have a good chat with a mate. I'm at the same, you know, like I've had to, I've had to realize what's going on 
and uh, yeah, my my trigger effects are are not good. I don't oh. really want to mention them. Yeah, yeah, and, no, and no, for no, me, sure. that is my medication. Knowing that I can pick the phone up and actually speak to someone rather than being yeah. irrational in my response, because my irrational yeah. responses aren't prey. <laughs> By any means, they're not prey. But nonetheless, so the first time that that you actually spoke to anyone about it. Did you find it difficult to actually admit? Because I, th- I thought that was my biggest thing, was actually admitting that I was admitting that I had a problem. I didn't know what that problem was. I didn't know where it came from, where it was going. Um, I actually, For me, it was very difficult because I didn't want to... I didn't want to put my burden on somebody else. Like, I, I know I should have talked to my wife about it, but I didn't want to turn around to her and say, look, I'm struggling. I, I don't know what we're going to do with this decision. I don't know what we're going to do with that decision. But it's not even that specific, though, is it? It's I'm struggling, but I don't know why, how, or what it is. How do you have that yep. conversation? Exactly. I mean, there was... Right, so I, a perfect example, right? So I was paid my last pay for my old company. Um, it didn't come through the day it was meant to come through. So I woke up. I needed... I'm getting old. I needed a pee in the middle of the night. So I got up, I checked my, I hadn't had a payslip or anything, so I checked my internet banking at about one o'clock in the morning, yeah. and I hadn't been paid, and I'm like, yeah, no, that's stress. So, that, straight away, I did not sleep until about half past five in the morning. Now, what? had yeah, because I was stressed, oh, I've not got any, I've not got money, how am I going to pay this bill, how am I going to pay that bill, how am I going to get to my new work on day one, because I hadn't been paid. Now, I put it in my mind that, right, okay, so if I've not been paid, there's a reason I've not been paid, let's phone and speak to them. That was great, but that doesn't stop your mind still going at 100 mile an hour. However, before, I wouldn't have told anyone about that. I would have just kept that to myself and worried about it on my own. But first thing that happened, when my wife so rudely woke me up about an hour after I'd fallen back asleep... I explained what had happened. She's like, right, okay, that's fine. Just phone your work and let me know what happens. And I would have stressed on that. So I would have been stressing about the situation. I would have been stressing about hiding it from my wife. I would have been stressing about everything. Whereas, I sh- I, yeah, it's a stressful situation, but just telling her and her being like, okay, just, just deal with it was enough for me to be like, yeah, it's not actually that bad. I mean, I didn't... Hence the word me. good. I did phone Ian and uh, and shout and ball at him and have a few funny funny words, but yeah. But we still had the same thing about having the same conversation. I told you my thoughts on it, and you were like, "Yeah, I've had all these thoughts. That's fine as long as it's logical." And somebody else is having the same thoughts as to what's happened. Yeah. So although although we we're going through it, we think we're past it. I don't think you ever do. I mean, if you, I think if you're wired in a certain way, you're always going to be either a panicker or you're going to have decisions and thoughts in your head regardless of medication or regardless of of being in happy places i mean i've tried a few things like uh, i don't know if brett if you've come across it yet it's a thing called mood gym no so mood Explain. gym mood gym's quite quite cool so mood gym's a website you log in when you're feeling down and it'll ask you a series of maybe 20 questions how's okay. your day what are you doing what have you done recently what are you looking forward to and what it does, it just, I think they ask more positive than negative questions. So what that tries to do is if you're asking positive questions and getting positive responses, that then naturally brings up somebody's mood. Okay, yeah, definitely. It sounds like a neurological programming or neu- neuro-linguistics, I think they're calling it or something like that. So, yeah, it, it, it definitely, um, so I know I'm diverging a little bit. Sorry, stealing the thunder here, gents. Um, time so to I shine. meditate. So, it, it, yeah, I wish it was my time to shine. I'm going to be shining soon, that's. Um, so I meditate a lot. Um, I do about 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening in visualizing not only my surroundings around me, but also how my body is reacting. So if my heart is, if I've got anxiety, that's what I'm saying, I'm off the medication, I'm using meditation, uh, medication off, meditation on, um, to effectively just figure this out. And it's it's, it's been wonderful. And, I'm so um, impressed by that. Uh, just, 
Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's very difficult, don't get me wrong. And uh, I'm going to quote Lucy, uh, Lucy Muscat on this side where we spoke about having cold showers. And to be honest with you, every single day I get into a shower absolutely freezing cold. What that started doing was it started do adding the survival mode into my neurons and, and that type of thing. And I noticed that as soon as I jumped in and I had that big breath, that, you know, that type of moment, panic. not the moment when you're like uh, in fright, like the panic. But the minute I breathed and I was like, wow, this cold, this cold sorry, dyslexia, shoulder, shower, this cold shower actually opened up my senses. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me try this for one week. Then it ended up two weeks. And now I'm like four months down the line. And every single time I shower, it's a cold shower. And I, and I just, I, yeah. I know it sounds hardcore, no, but, I, but it's, 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 a, it's awakening me. It's awakening my, my nervous system. It's awakening my breathing. So. Just to dive on a little bit. So obviously we're on a podcast. One of the podcasts that I listen to quite a bit is for Joe Rogan. Yep. And Joe Rogan has these cryo showers. And what it's also meant to do is meant to also cold showers stimulate your blood flow because it's cooling your blood flow down, which means it has to react in different ways. Yep. Um, so when I go for a swim, uh, swimming is one of the things I do quite often, or quite often I do it all the time. Uh, and that takes me away. So I go swimming, I put headphones in, I listen to a podcast, I listen to music. It just takes me out of the scenario, real world, uh, just chill. I don't think about anything else. This I, Sometimes I don't even listen to the podcasts. I mean, I know I tell Jonas I always listen to his podcasts when I'm swimming. It's a lie, Jonas, his background music. How do, how do you swim? How do you swim? Sorry, how do you listen? Sorry, I've got everything back. <laughs> How do we listen when you're swimming? <laughs> Johnny have got waterproof headphones. So I've got two of them. I have yeah. one that's just for music and I've got one that's just for podcasts. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, they're, they're quite good. They're in ear. They work fine. You can go underwater with them. They're perfect. I'm scared to even so think I, about using them because I'm going to electrocute my brain. I'll give you a shot of mine no, next. I'm scared, but scared honestly, me. They're, they're brilliant. Um, the only issue is I've got an Apple Watch and it's Bluetooth and I can connect the Bluetooth watch to the Bluetooth headphones. But if you use the Bluetooth underwater, it doesn't work very well. Yep. It's, it's a bit of a nightmare. But going back to where, where I was going, I have my swim, I come out and I have my cold shower yep. and it's just so relaxing. And it's amazing what it does. I Anytime I have a shower... I always end in a cold shower, more because in my head it just helps clean and close my pores and all that. It's like the whole going for a sauna steam room thing, which I love, and always go for a cold shower. But it's funny that we all do that same thing. And on the meditation thing, when Mark was talking about that mind gym, one of the things that I use is mindful meditation tapes. I don't, I'm not brilliant at meditating myself. I, I use them just to kind of center me a little bit. But I've got a whole bunch of a whole series of the. Uh, mindful meditation and i wish that i could probably sit and meditate myself and do that whole project my my environment around me because i think that's such such a strong piece of medicine for your mind definitely so so i mean 100 percent there yeah um in there so it's just like the meditation um the cold showers i must admit it's just like there's there's this uh, I know it sounds really bad, but uh, I don't mean it in any bad way because I still miss there's a little individual that's out there roaming with mum and I miss her every day because I don't get to see her and um, it brings tears to my eyes. So, um, I'm sorry, lads. Um, no, I don't apologise to us, man. No, no. It's, it, yeah. it, can, it can be difficult. I mean, I, Oof, yeah. I, I couldn't even imagine being in that scenario and that's one of the things that that scares me the most. Um, so yeah, I honestly couldn't imagine being where you are. I, I don't think I would have actually been able to cope as uh, as well as you seem to be going now. I I, I can add up that. So I mean, I, I, and I think there as well it proves that everybody's situation is totally different. We all have these thoughts and different experiences with it, but the the force behind it or, or what happens it, it is totally different and everybody is unique and everybody has their own individual story and that's what's good to talk about and good to tell it's not easy gents it's not easy at all eh? and um i can tell you and it sounds like by the all of us is that 
we just got to go through the motions of the oceans. But I think the thing is, and one thing that I've learned, and I use the word happiness as a very, um, I'm going to use it loosely here on the podcast, but for me it means a lot, is that I was chasing it so much that I was looking under every single tree, every single rock, everything, just to be happy. But instead of being happy for others and making others happy, as you guys know, I made you guys laugh on the Moses and the 10, the Ten Questions podcast, that I, I, I was so happy doing that, that when this happened, I stopped doing it. So what I'm trying to tell everybody is, is that if you can try and make somebody else happy, just make them laugh, make them smile. I mean, obviously, we had a good uh, good chuckle about uh, Mark's computer not starting up in the blue screen of death. That, you know, like, and, <laughs> and those are the things that we generally tend to forget. And if we can make somebody else's day happy, that we will find happiness along the way. Exactly. Pay it forward, 100%. It definitely does seem like it is a very selfish thing to do, but it is. I mean, you are your happiness is based on somebody else being happy. So you're really, I'm, oh, what was it now? There's an episode of Friends. Now, I hate Friends, but it's always on in my household. There's an episode where they talk about there is never, there is not such a thing in the world as a selfless act. And I think, did Jonas not give us a bollocking on this as well for something? There is not such a thing as a selfless act. It doesn't exist. Hmm everything so giving money to charity you give money to charity you feel better about yourself so that's not selfless you do something good for somebody but you are rewarded by by happiness there's not such things as selfless act i don't have a scooby where i'm going with that but talking about (laughs) talking about (laughs) making people happy (laughs) what other things so you do your cycling you you do your meditation. Now, meditation is, as Ian says, it's something that that would be awesome. I, I've i done yoga a few times, and um, I've even done hot yoga, which is a conversation, Brett, for your podcast, I think. Yeah, I was I just about to say, if I, if I start seeing you doing yoga, I'm actually picturing it right now and having a big, <laughs> well, smile on my face. Well, think hot, so think hot yoga. Think of yoga in a 100-degree sauna. No, no, I was just what? thinking of you being hot, Mark, you know, like hot, Mark, like as in love, Mark. Like, <laughs> See, that's never me back. Act. That's me back. See, never a selfless act, is there? You're, you're now just making yourself feel good thinking about me. <laughs> yeah, no, look, it's lovely, hey? It's, it's such a wonderful thought to think of you moving in such provocative And if that's ways. your happy place, Brett, you know where you need to go? Going that, to watch that, Mark do yoga. Hot I yoga. mean, if that is if that is your happy place, then that's a safe place to go. <laughs> <laughs> At least we've got the artwork now. The artwork is one hundred percent sorted for this episode. Oh it's just God. me doing yoga with Brett's happy place underneath it. Oh goodness gracious me! Like listening oh. to that. Well, seeing that you're chatting about charity earlier, um, I'm busy actually doing. They they call in in the cycling world. There's a thing called Everesting. So. This particular individual is a mate of mine's daughter. She's got cerebral palsy. She's got um, epilepsy. She's 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 wheelchair she's wheelchair bound, and I'm doing this challenge as well to not only prove to myself that I can overcome the darkest places, but overcome something that where somebody else benefits from it. So it's just a little charity run that I'm doing. Not many people know about it. Um, most of the funding is also going to come from myself and that, but it's it's just to have a mental goal to say i'm going to be doing this for somebody for this little girl um and just turn around and say that i'm going to put my body through the worst endurance going up and down a hill up until i get to the same elevation as everest yeah and it's a mental challenge and it's that is a small goal that i've got now to get me through the darkness and besides mark's yoga hotness and that picture running through my mind right now and uh some bleaching we were talking about earlier in life um yeah it's uh it's definitely uh <laughs> well what what I think, you know probably agree, me, agree with me on this but um if you send us a link we will donate our sponsor money for this episode to your good cause oh you are joking are you serious yeah, yeah, we'll give you some money towards it. Send us a link. Oh, God. You might even see it in the show just... notes or something. You never know. Yes, we can put it in there. Oh, um, so, guys. See, again, again, though, it's a selfless act because we now feel good because we've oh. we've 
we've brought some life to you and we've helped somebody further on. Yeah. It's the butterfly yeah. effect, 100%, whether you're positive or negative and all the rest that of it. Awesome. So he, here's, a, awesome film. here's a thing. I don't even know if I've ever told you this before, Mark. You, I've got a tattoo on my back that's a star within a circle. The centre of the star is faded out purposely. It looks like it's just an old tattoo now. But I got that tattoo when I was 21. And I based it on the circle of life, the whole like Buddhism, everything else, and Celtic mythology and things like that, the circle of life. So the points of the star represent points of my life which are not static, just different places where you've been. The circle joins them all together because no matter where you've been or where you're from, you'll always come back to it. And it's that cause and ripple effect. And the centre is faded because when I got it done, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know where I was. I just knew that I had to kind of keep this circle of life going forward because that's what happens. It's self-perpetuating and all that. And getting that put on me made me control my situation more and made me drive forward. And I now have it as a mark to remember where I was that I never want to go back to it, but I know it's part of me. So let's let's make it a happy place. Can you tell us about any other tattoos that you've got on your feet? Oh, my house. <laughs> <laughs> I tell everyone this story from on Ian Oh, Park. this is the funniest one with the house. So I was going to buy a house and it kind of fell through. And my mates owned a tattoo shop. So I was in and I let the receptionist buy me a, a house as long as she got to tattoo it on me. And I have what is effectively a preschool house on my ankle. That is super it cool It looks story. like a jailhouse tattoo. But I have this cool house on my in my foot that my mates bought me in the tattoo shop. <laughs> You're going to get ragged, Ian. That's Dude, a good one. So listen. Wait till you so see listen, it. I'll send you so a picture if, of it. So if I come over, can I draw a garden? Like myself as the garden and the go- and the flower in the oh, background. Yeah. You know? Mark, m- m- see, that could then become, that's a full circle. That is full circle. Dude, does that even is... smoke coming out the chimney in this house? That's emotional. Brilliant. That's number 10. Damn it. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's on the Damn board. It. 10. Damn it. I'm losing yeah. you. So what other coping mechanisms do you use? Like, so, so what, my, my, co- I mean, my I, coping mechanisms, or are we talking everybody here in general? Well, everyone. I mean, I'll, right, I'll go first. So I do a lot of swimming. Yep. I, do you know what? Dynamics community is fantastic. I, I think that is also one of the things that's helped me out so much. Yes, I've got two thumbs up here. Uh, two thumbs up. TDG, the Microsoft communities, Black Ops, Chris, everybody, you name it, you guys. Yep, love, yep. Lo- love the I mean, Australians I, too. I don't get to see them because they're in a different time zone, but yeah. It's just things like if I go down to London now, I can say, right, I'm going to be in London for a day. Who's around? So I've been, I went down to Chris's house. Chris and his missus got some uh, some pizzas in. I went for food with Lucy. I've met, <sighs> I've just met loads of people through it. And it's it's just there and you can say hello. You can say what's happening. You can say I'm struggling. I mean, I got quite a lot of people, even after my blog, just send me a message saying, look, I'm struggling. I know you're not a professional, but can you point me in the right direction? What, just things like that. Here. The community is huge. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. why I'm here. So, uh, yeah, thank you to the both of you. It's it's unreal. It's it's. I, I actually didn't realize what was actually going to happen in my life, obviously being part of this Microsoft company. And the effect that it happened is, uh, it's phenomenal. Just the people meeting you guys, you guys were on my podcast, now I'm on your podcast. And uh, yeah, definitely massive positivity. The people are awesome. There's so much love. Not like love is in love, love, wink, wink, nod, nod. You know, like uh, we'll get there one day. <laughs> no, I think there is. I think, I genuinely think that there are people not people yeah okay not people that you love but there are people who i i would go to some of the people in the community to talk to before i would go to people that were my friends five or six years yeah. ago because that's the sort of late relationship you have with yeah. them it's, it's no longer just a work thing uh, yeah i work in dynamic space i work in dynamic ce but from all the communities and the different events and the different people that you speak to i've got genuine friendships yeah yeah, and I think the events are a big part of it as well because you have the banter on the lead up to the event, you meet people at the event, you have a laugh, you have a good time, you go out, you have food, and you chat about the event afterwards. And now these are the things that, for somebody who suffers from depression, a lot of times you don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to speak to people. I mean, 
for me being as loud and obnoxious, and I know I'm loud and obnoxious. And you're a big guy. I'm, I am. I'm a big. Thanks, Brett. Cheers. That's that's just putting me my, my mood right down. To call me a big guy, but yeah, I'm a big guy. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious, but I am very very socially awkward. So I also don't drink. So for me, going out to places where folk are having a drink at night and getting drunk and things like that, it's not really my scene. But because I know everybody and I know the community and I know who they are, I actually enjoy those things because it's with more people that I know rather than going to a wedding where you know three people. Yeah. So I think I think calling you the big guy there or the markets, obviously the teddy bear, I'm going to say, because you're actually a big guy, but you've got a very soft heart. You know? So uh, I, I don't mind cuddling you. I don't you're, mind cuddling you. But it's all, he won't cuddle you, though. He's still not over that part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I still don't cuddle people. It doesn't happen. I mean, Ben Vollmer tried to cuddle me. Uh, I can't. And I don't. I think... can't wait to see him now in don't... April. So I haven't replied to his mail. Oh, golly gosh. Um, so yeah. So definitely, I think the thing is other coping mechanisms. Let's let's think about it, Jen. So we spoke about the showers. We spoke about meditation. Spoke about physical activity. I I think the thing is, and I yep. think we we generally have highlighted this most of the time is communication. Yeah. So what I mean by that is is that we are now communicating. People, if you're listening, start communicating because put down your cell phones switch them off, put it in a cupboard and communicate. Because if you don't communicate the story that you're trying to tell or the hardship that you're going through or the darkness that you're wanting to do is not, is not going to be there. So put down your phone, look up, smile, breathe. Because if you say the word good, you're still alive, you know, those type of things. And Oh, it's 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 so good to just be talking to you guys. Right, I I don't know. I'm actually high fiving myself here in the background. It's just it's unreal. It's, <laughs> it's, oh, I can't though. say the word. I'm down to ten. So yeah. Well, and, well, I, you should actually see me. I've got the pain and I'm hovering like right now. He's, he's, no, he's fishing as well. He's actually planting it. That's the worst part of that. There, yeah. he's setting yeah. you up. But you are. Yeah, but you know what the worst thing is, guys? And I get so jelly about this. Is that. I'm sitting at the bottom of Africa. I, we don't have the expenditure to send me out. We don't have ma- We don't have some of the major events like we do, like you guys. And I won't lie. I sit here and I'm actually like super jelly half of the time when you guys have like D365 Scotland or the UK uh, hackathons. And I'm just sitting back here and I'm just like, I've got a British passport. All that I need to do is just jump on a plane. But the, the cost of it all just adds up very, very quickly, you know? And it's... Yeah. I get super jelly, and that's. I just want to be with everybody in the community. So we are going to give yeah. you a date, and Ian's probably going to give me. See, this is no, this no, is what I'm, I do. I'm okay right? with this. Is, I spoke is, about this. I know what he's going to do. This is exactly what he does. He was going to try and fling something out there, like shock and awe, and it would have worked. But we spoke about it. I still don't know if I'd be publicising what he's going to talk about just now, <laughs> and that's where what he does as this crazy so, man out there. So I we've had chats and we think that we're going to run another D365 event next year but we're going to run it on the 29th right. of February because that is an awesome it's day. It only well, happens once because it doesn't happen years. that often. It's brilliant. So yes, we we want to see you in Scotland and we will help yeah. in any way we can to get you yeah. over here to get you in with the community and help while you're over here, we'll get you interviewing for jobs. We're keeping you. Once you're here, you're uh, not going back. This is, this is obviously the first call for speakers. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Brett, if you even want to be a speaker, if you want to do some sort of unique yep. topic you want to speak on, there's different negotiations that happen on that element as well. So, you never okay, know. No, we'll great stuff. Out. I don't mind being a key yes. speaker, and uh, I would, it would be an absolute privilege. Absolute... <laughs> how, how yeah, yeah, do you see, do you see how it works? Eh? You know. <laughs> Accept with grace. I've accepted from, with he, grace. He's gone from, mm. You've gone from, I, I, I would love to go to one of these events, but I can't get there to, <laughs> I am the key speaker. Bow Positivity, down guys. Positivity. <laughs> just laying it out there. If you meditate yeah. on it, it will happen. It, it's what is it, It's the Wayne's World, isn't it? When they're booking the, the Wayne Fest. And he says, if you, yeah. if you book them, they will come. <laughs> Which is the, obviously the rip off of Fuel the Dreams, but we kind of used, I used that saying for the first event, didn't I? I think you did use the Fuel the Dream ones, but in my head, it's obviously just what I grew up with. I see Wayne's World, and, and that, that's like the projection. The whole projection. Does that mean I get to do a, can I keep the, can I keep that in this time then? 
Well, if you put it somewhere that makes logical sense, not just fling it out randomly. Awesome. So <laughs> we've kept, please remember not to edit that out. It's, do you see what's happened? We've gone from very like oh. hardcore talking to actually just uplifted. Up, uh, I'm actually going to just walk across the road and go have a drink now. That's how happy I am by myself. Dude, see, that's, and that's, that's a good it, place to be. And that, it's the talking. It's being able to talk to somebody, having a laugh with them. And yeah, you, I think you, one of your last things that you said was yeah. communication is key. And I think that is is the biggest thing. If you can talk to somebody talk with somebody or even just listen to somebody's opinion on it then it can put you in a good place yeah like if we don't edit this at all and i'm saying this so this bit will probably get edited out but if we don't edit this at all you see the journey where we've went high low a wee bit up and down all over the place and now we're going back to this naturally high point it's it's just natural now it's not like we've tried to do it and it's because of communication it's because we've shared we've spoke about it and we're like right honestly that's that's been a good chat thanks very much see you see you next week that is it's It's been respect so i i think we um we we've had the the emotional roller coaster the ups and the downs as ian said so let's um Let's get everyone talking and communicating. Where can people find you on social media? So myself, um, I actually got it open. I, I've actually put my phone away talking to you guys and that type of thing. So uh, social media, and let's start with uh, let's start with the good old Twitter. So the the Moses of CRM. So Moses, or well, my hand, I, I didn't even know the social media lingo. So my handle is Moses of CRM. And uh, in terms of LinkedIn, just look for Brett Rogers. Um, I'll, I'll give the links through to you guys. And uh, also, if you are very active on Strava, just look up Brett Rogers as well, South Africa. And um, yeah, let's let's do that. And then let's start challenging one another, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, it, it is what it is. And, uh, and dude, do you know what? I am going to put a It's Been Emotional bra on there. On there. From me. Oh, there we go. And one more from Ian, and that takes it's us up to 10. It's emotional, bruh. It's emotional, bruh. I'm kind of glad we ended that chat with Moses on a positive. It does show that you can be up, you can be down, and I think we've even, in that conversation, we've hit highs, we've hit lows. Um, I'm going to joke, <laughs> yeah. joke a little bit about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll joke a little bit about it here when I say it's like a month for me. There's highs, there's lows, there's peaks, there's troughs. It kind of goes back and forward. And it just shows you there are, there's different reasons for for people's mood changes. I was going to say mood swings, but mood changes. There's different things that can affect you. It's not always under your control, but we can't reiterate this enough. If you need to talk to somebody, whether it's a friend, family, a charity, a specialist, anybody. Just it's difficult the first time you do it because it's difficult to admit that you have the problem. But try and reach out to somebody to to say that you need help. Yeah, even if you don't know what it is you're needing help for, sometimes just putting your head above the parapet to say, "I'm not coping," is enough to start that conversation with someone. And the weight that comes off your shoulders potentially could be massive so it's a good thing to do thanks for listening remember to subscribe to the podcast with your favorite app and check out crm.audio for information on all the other shows on the network